Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for swinging by. As usual, I'm out at Tallgrass Shooting Sports, so thanks to Mike and Lisa for allowing me to bring you guys this content out here at the range. That means so very much to me. If you guys don't already know, fitandfire.com is up and running. It's my website. If you guys are interested in finding uh, stuff that I'm talking about in my videos or good deals, swing on by. Link in the description. I'd really do appreciate it. Just so you know, there are affiliate links there, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, that's a good way to do it. And then finally, if you're not sub subscribed to the channel, if I could even say the word, uh, please consider to do that. Uh, there's about 85% of you guys watching the videos that are not subscribed, and you may be missing out on some great videos. So please consider it, hit that button, and then turn on the bell so you're not missing out on anything. All right, so let's get into it. We're talking about the Zistava USA ZPAP M70, and this rifle is a Kalishnikov style rifle, but it's got some differences, and that's why I wanted to bring this rifle to you guys and talk about it. I've already talked about the Palmetto State Armory PSAK GF3, talked about the RH10 from the Kugier Rifle Factory. Uh, in Romania, and now I wanted to talk about a, a different variation to the Kalishnikov rifle that is, I think, a viable option for a lot of you guys out there, and that is the Yugo pattern rifle. Now, the ZPAP is the third generation of the M70 rifle that has been imported into the United States. It first started with the OPAP and then it was the NPAP and now we have the ZPAP. The biggest difference between the ZPAP and the other ones is the fact that this one is imported into the United States specifically by Zustava USA. So you don't have to worry about this rifle going to a company like Century to have things you know kind of milled out and you know changed for nine 2-2R compliance. Uh, this is going to be uh, handled from the factory in Serbia, uh, formerly Yugoslavia, to Zistava USA here in uh, Des Plaines, Illinois. <laughs> and um, that way they're able to kind of control the QAQC uh, with this rifle a little bit better, in my opinion. I don't know if that's the case or not, but that's kind of how I see it. So let's talk about some of the major differences that you will find with this rifle, and then we'll kind of do a real quick overview of what's going on as far as uh, the makeup of this rifle. First and foremost, the Yugos are noticeable uh, in its differences from kind of the aesthetic look of this rifle, and that is going to be noticeable here with the handguard. Uh, you'll notice that the handguard has three vent holes, and that is going to be different than what you would find, say, from like a Wasser. Those are going to be uh, a shorter handguard that's going to have two vent holes, so you're gaining about an inch worth of handguard, and that's a good plus because it allows me personally to get my hand a little bit further out on this rifle to be able to pull it into my shoulder a little bit better and that's something I really do like. In addition the bottom hand guard is going to be a wedged shape so it won't have a palm swell. If you like palm swells that's great for me. I'm not a big fan of them personally. Uh, I like this design a little bit better. It works well with my small hands uh, because I'm like Doug Flutie, you know? I don't know. <laughs> I just like it better. Uh, the other big thing is the buttstock is not going to be attached by the tang from the receiver. It's actually going to have a bolt that runs through the buttstock and attaches to the rear trunnion. So that's another major difference. The big reason why I'm pointing these out is that is going to be a compatibility issue when it comes to this rifle to your standard AKM. So keep that in mind as we go through talking about this rifle. All right, so let's talk about uh, what's going on as far as the makeup of this rifle, starting from the tip, working to the back. Uh, first and foremost, it has a 16.3 inch cold hammer forged barrel, and that's something I personally really like. Cold hammer forged barrels are inherently a little bit more accurate than a standard steel or chrome line barrel, so uh, that's a plus for me. 
The downside to it is if you are the type of person that has a lot of surplus ammunition that is corrosive, uh, with it not having a chrome lining on the barrel, that could cause a problem with, you know, deterioration of the barrel, pitting, so on and so forth, if you don't clean the barrel and the rifle right away after a range session. I don't have that problem because I run non-corrosive ammo, so I really don't care about that. But if you do run corrosive ammo, that's something you may need to consider. The next thing is the uh, front sight post is um, a little bit more robust than some of the other ones that are out there, and that's something I like. I can tell that this rifle is um, pretty straight, you know, really straight actually, uh, just by not only looking down the rifle itself, but also the fact that there was very little to no windage adjustment that I had to do on the front sight post. So that is a major plus in my consideration, in my opinion rather. It does have a cleaning rod, so for you purists out there, it does come with one of those, but you will notice that it does not have a bayonet lug on the gas block. So you boogaloo boys out there that are concerned about uh, the next Civil War running around and you're going to throw your bayonet uh, on your rifle and do a charge, um, it's not there. So, eh, whatever. The uh, sling point attachment is integrated into the gas block, so um, that may be a pro or a con to you, I don't know. Uh, that's something I did notice that the Norinkos, uh, they do on their um, Kalashnikov style rifle, so that's pretty cool. But uh, normally you'll find them on the handguard retaining bracket down here uh, on your standard AKMs. The biggest thing with this is it may make the sling or hold the rifle a little bit closer to your body. So that's something to think about. Uh, if you are wearing body armor, it may be a little bit closer to you. Could cause you to have a more stable platform to shoot from, but it may also cause issues when it comes to getting this out in front of you to do any type of magazine change um, if you're running drills. So consideration uh, right there. As far as the fit and finish goes with this rifle, it is gorgeous. The wood on this is immaculate. I love the feel of it. It looks really good. That dark, rich uh, looking wood is really nice. Uh, the receiver looks great. The fit and finish on everything there is really nice. The rivets are not overpressed or underpressed. They're not canted. All the rivets look great. And then there are no uh, noticeable tooling marks to my eye. Uh, there may be some that I'm just not picking up on, but by and large, looking at this rifle compared to say like an RH-10, you can tell a noticeable difference. And that's something I really, really did like. All right, so let's talk about some of the other differences when it comes to this rifle compared to say like a Wasser. And that's going to be here on this bracket mounted to the side of the receiver. This is where you would put your optics rail uh, and attach it to your rifle right here. This is going to be a Yugo design. So if you're looking for a optics rail from like RS Regulate, you're going to have to ensure that it specifically says a Yugo, Yugoslavian or an M70 uh, rail mount uh, to ensure that the compatibility is correct. So keep that in mind. And then Back here is a button on the back side of the receiver, and that is for your recoil spring. It's the recoil spring retention button, pin, whatever you want to call it. And at first I didn't think I was going to like it, but I have actually come to really enjoy that feature because while it is a bit cumbersome to depress that pin and then push the recoil spring in to take the dust cover off, it does retain the recoil spring in the uh, rear trunnion. So if you do take the recoil spring out and you put it back in, as you reassemble it, that pin will prevent this from coming all the way back on the rear trunnion. So when you put your dust cover on, you don't have to worry about smacking it on. You can just line everything up and then press the button and it locks itself right in. And that's something I really have come to enjoy. So let me talk about the internals. 
One of the great things about this rifle when it comes to the internals is the fact that the trigger or the fire control group is from the Zestava factory in Serbia. So this is not a G2, Tapco G2 trigger. It's not a Sentry Arms trigger. This is the trigger that comes from the factory in Serbia. So you don't have to worry about some Joe Schmo here in the United States that's getting paid minimum wage just throwing something in there. This is being assembled with the rifle across the ocean. That's something I really, really do like. It has about a four and a half pound trigger pull, which is on par with the GF3, uh, not as light as the RH10, but um, you know, it really, you, you don't notice it until you're, you know, slowly pulling that trigger for uh, zeroing the rifle or for accuracy. And we'll get into accuracy in a future video. The next thing is the bolt and the carrier. This is going to be a forged bolt and carrier group. Um, it does have a hard nickel plating to the carrier, which is nice because it gives that polished look to it, but it also al allows you to clean things a little bit easier as well. The uh, carbon doesn't really kind of stick to it as easily. So that's something I really do uh, like from an aesthetic viewpoint. Uh, the rear sight is your standard AK sight, so nothing special there, uh, but it does look really nice with that polished um, top side of it. And then the, uh, all, the, um, all the different settings here are you know, really lined up perfectly, so that's something that I also did like about that too. Let's talk about some of the downsides to this rifle. If you are someone who is well versed in the Kalashnikov rifle, uh, this rifle may not be something that you're looking for unless you're kind of a collector and you want something a little bit different than another Arsenal or Wasser or whatever. Um, that would be kind of the big reason why you would get this. If you're new to the AK world, then this would be a good quality rifle for you to take a look at. Maybe you may not like it after all, but uh, from the get-go, I've really have liked it. The uh, biggest problem that you're going to have with this though is like I've mentioned, the compatibility issue with the parts on this rifle. So. That's my biggest complaint when it comes to the Yugo. Um, there are aftermarket parts out there, but they are a little bit more difficult to find, maybe a little bit more expensive. Uh, so that's something to take into consideration. The next thing that I wanted to talk about that I'm not a big fan of is this safety lever. While it does have a really nice feature that allows you to uh, have a bolt hold open feature. So if you're at the range and they require that. You don't have to worry about carrying a chamber flag. Uh, you can just hold it open that way. But I will say that the safety lever is very stiff to operate. So um, if you are the type of person that runs drills and does like a double tap and places your weapon on safe after each iteration, it, your hands get wore out pretty quick. Uh, I've tried to bend it and I can't do that to relieve some of the tension. Um, it just hasn't worked out. So something I'm just gonna have to live with. I don't think that I can swap it out for like a Krebs Custom Enhanced Safety Lever. So there's that issue too. I may be mistaken about that. If I am, let me know, but uh, I don't think I can do that. However, by and large, this rifle has been extremely fun to shoot. It shoots extremely flat, which is something that I've noticed right out of the box uh, in comparison to my RH10. So that's been a major plus. And again, aesthetically, it looks great. It's a great looking rifle. We'll get into accuracy here in the near future, but I will say after running a few hundred rounds, there's no noticeable issues when it comes to the rifle breaking down or any type of uh, odd wear patterns on the internals. So that's really nice. Uh, and it's it's been a f just enjoyable rifle. It's something a little bit different than what everybody else is used to seeing. So that's really nice. The final thing that I will say about this rifle 
is uh, when it comes to the 922R compliance, the only pieces that are on this rifle that comes from the United States is going to be the furniture, the wood furniture, the slant brake, and then two components in the Zestiva USA magazine. I think it's the follower and the base plate are US components as well. So that keeps a lot of the internal parts uh, consistent from the Kruger, or excuse me, from the Zestiva factory in Serbia. So that's something that I really, really did like about this rifle as well. All right, that about it covers it for the Zestiva USA ZPAP M70. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this rifle. Sound off in the comment section down below. Uh, is the ZPAP right for you or are you trying to save money up for, say, like an Arsenal, or is a Wasser a better option for you? I would love to hear what you would have to say about this rifle or any other AK that you guys are running down below in the comments. That would be awesome. The next thing I want to talk about real quick is um, make sure that you guys are taking time for your family. Naturally, I'm out here at the range. Uh, graciously, my family allows me to be out here uh, once a week to bring you guys this content. But uh, sometimes, you know, we miss out on saying the important things. So make sure that you say, you know, that you love your family, that you miss your family when you're away from them, uh, and that they mean the world to you because you know sometimes we miss out on that and uh, it's a good way to start off 2020 with uh, letting them know that uh, they are more important than these things. These things are great to protect the family but at the end of the day they're the ones that are the most important so make sure you tell them. All right we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thanks so much for swinging by as always freedom through strength and here comes a high five. Take care guys. Bye.